Well, we start our program with China's latest space mission. China is set to conduct its uh, third docking with the Tiangong 1 lab module as the Shenzhou 10 manned spacecraft is expected to launch Tuesday evening. Three astronauts were on board to space for this mission when they spoke to the press on Monday. Yuri starts us off. At 5.38 p.m. Beijing time Tuesday, the third Chinese manned spacecraft, Shenzhou 10, will be launched to the space from the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center in northwest China. The final phase of preparations have begun, with the modified Long March 2F carrier rocket now being transported to the launch site and fueled up. The spokeswoman for the Chinese space program said the Shenzhou 10 mission is a stepping stone toward building China's space capability. This mission aims to further test technologies for docking and supporting the astronauts stay in space and try new technologies related to the construction of a space station. The rocket will carry three crew members, including China's second female astronaut, to the Tiangong 1, a target orbiter and space module sent to space in 2011. The captain of the crew, Nie Haisheng, and Wang Xiaoguang will carry out two dockings between Shenzhou 10 and Tiangong 1 lab module, one automatic and the other manual. Later in the mission, Wang Yaping, the only female crew member, will give a video lecture from inside the Tiangong 1 to a group of Chinese students on the ground. She will show them some of the team's projects and what it's like to be weightless in space. I will demonstrate some physics experience done in the space environment. As an astronaut, I'm also a learner, like those students. I think we will learn together and have a great time in space. The spacecraft will spend 15 days in orbit before returning to Earth. The CCTV. And for the latest about the space program, we are now joined on the line by reporter Wang Yijun, who has been covering the launch from Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. Good evening, Yijun. Hello, Zhou Yue. Only 21 hours left before the launch of Shenzhou 10. How's the work going on? Well, we've all met the three crew members a while ago, Ni Haisheng, Zhang Xiaoguang, and Wang Yaping. Well, they have met the press and have returned to the accommodation. And there won't be too many training to do for them tonight. Uh, they can use good sleep a day before the launch. But early tomorrow morning on Tuesday, they will have to get up early and practice one last time of the rendezvous and docking techniques, which they have been exercising for almost 2,000 times already. Mm. And now let's talk about the space vehicle. Um, running into this hour, the fueling of the rocket has already started, and propellant is now being injected into the boosters. Now, this process means the mission is now irreversible. If the mission is caught off at this point, the rocket uh, will have to be abandoned because the booster tank is a one-time component. The rocket cannot be reused. Hmm. Well, the, so the fueling process is considered to be the most important task in the final stage of the preparation. And now the weather in Jiuquan is looking very good with clear sky and almost no wind. So we hope the weather will be as good as we're seeing right now. So, yeah. Well, it seems it's set to go. And also, it's set to go for China's space program. It is a huge plan. What is the future for that China space endeavor? It has been a decade since the first Chinese astronaut went into space. And many have said... Uh, this has been the fastest growing decade indeed for China's manned space program. If the Shenzhou 10 mission is successful, the next mission will be started in about two years' time. That's in 2015. And that'll be China's first move to officially start building its space station. Experts say China is likely to set up its first space station by around 2020. And mm -hmm. this is an interesting time, Zoya, because the existing International Space Station will then go into the end of its rated lifetime. So. The retirement time of the ISS uh, has not been decided, but very likely it will it'll be around the same time. That's also 2020. So this can be a huge opportunity for China. China's future space station, which, which will then be the only space station on, on orbit, will be an attractive space science research platform. And China has already worked with Germany during the last Shenzhou 9 mission. And a more of this kind of cross-nation cooperation is also likely in the future. Apart from the manned mission, China is also actively conducting other space activities, including the launch of Chang'e 3 lunar mm. probe later this year. So, yeah. Obviously, China is catching up, and this time in space. Thank you very much, Yijir, for your reporting. Well, Shenzhou 10 is China's fifth manned mission to space and will last 12 days. It will take astronauts and cargo to and from the Tiangong 1 space lab module. Like the previous mission, Shenzhou 9, 
It will include a manned docking with the space station. Jing Yingqiao has more on the three astronauts who will take part in the mission. Ni Haisheng will be the mission's chief commander. It will be his second time in space after also taking part in the Shenzhou 6 mission. And this mission is something new in store for him. On Shenzhou 9, there was a 24-hour rotation policy, which meant the crew had to work 24 hours a day. But this time, we can sleep during the night, and after finishing our daily duties, we'll have time to relax and do things, like appreciate the beautiful view of space and listen to some music. Niu Haisheng was born in a small village in Zaoyang County in central China's Hubei province, the sixth of ten children. Nia's family was so poor that he only finished middle school with help from his teacher and neighbors. I was in the second year of junior high school when my father died. My family was so poor, I was forced to stop school and work in order to earn money. My teacher visited my family many times to try to persuade me to return. Finally, I went back to school. I wouldn't have what I have now without my teacher. That was the most important turning point in my life. The second turning point was after I graduated from high school and joined the army to become a pilot. That was the first step along my career path. The third turning point was passing the physical test for astronauts in 1996, which finally offered me the opportunity to go into space. Zhang Xiaoguang was chosen in 1998 for China's space mission. Fifteen years later, finally he's ready to go. I will look at our beautiful planet, our beautiful homeland. I can find out whether it's possible to see the Yangtze River and Yellow River. I can take a look at the deep universe and shining stars. I feel very excited. Since the team of astronauts was created in 1998, China has carried out four manned space missions. Whenever they reach space, they always phone their families. And this time is no exception. I think of my father. He said, son, go, be courageous and careful. I also think of my wife. I know she's very busy. Our child is taking exams for high school. A couple of days ago, I went home and said, you must be very tired. You know what she said? She was like, not at all. This is what I must do for my family and my love. Wang Yaping is the only female in the crew. She'll become the second Chinese female astronaut in space. It's been a long and winding road to the launch pad. It takes a great deal to become an astronaut. You have to be outstanding overall, have great specialty knowledge, go through lots of rigorous training to adapt to the space environment, and take very strict tests that allow almost no errors or mistakes. Before becoming an astronaut candidate, Wang used to be a pilot. She flew as part of relief efforts following the Wintran earthquake in 2008, as well as in other operations at the Beijing Olympic Games. I remember the first time I flew a plane on my own. I turned around and found my trainer was not with me. I was really thrilled and had a good shout in the cockpit. It's like I could finally do this on my own. One united Chinese dream. They can fly themselves. Jane Chow, CCTV. Well, actually, China's manned space program is a big project. It has three phases, indeed. The first phase is the launch of a manned spacecraft. The successful flights by Shenzhou 5 and 6 mark the accomplishment of this first phase. While well, the second phase aimed to break through the technical difficulties of docking two spacecraft together while building and launching a manned space lab. Well, the successful launch of space station module Tiangong-1 marked an important milestone for China's space program. Shenzhou 8, 9, and 10 are each expected to dock to that Tiangong-1 and conduct tests there. This will mark the end of the second phase. Well, according to the three-step plan, the future Tiangong-2 and Tiangong-3 space labs will conduct even more sophisticated research and experiments. The final step is to build China's first manned space station around 2020. While well, the station will be multifunctional, conducting experiments and making observations. Now, how about spending your life working and living in a remote environment? That's what thousands of scientists are doing at Dongfeng Space City to test those astronauts 
uh, living in space. China's first spacecraft launch center deep in the northwest desert of Inner Mongolia. The nearest city is two hours away by car. A reporter Wang Xinye went to ask some of the scientists there how they're coping with their life on the base and what made them choose to do the job. Software engineer Dr. An Jinxia is a key member of the data analysis team for China's Shenzhou Town program. Her expertise means she's played a part in every one of China's manned space missions. But she never envisaged the life in the desert. Dr. An has a PhD from Tsinghua University in Beijing. She married in 1998, but her husband came straight to work at the Dongfeng Space City while well, she remained in Beijing, finishing her degree. Then the chance came along to join him in the desert. My husband and I married in 1998, but didn't live together. I really want to stay with him. So two years later, when I was given a chance to transfer, I came here from Beijing immediately. She's now the mother of a nine-year-old. But it's not just family ties that keep her here. I like what I'm doing, and I enjoy working with those who've given a lot to China's space program. I feel proud to be part of it. Others arrived at the base by a different path. Qi Chudong joined the Space City's technological department last year as an engineer. He grew up in Guangdong province, but decided to move as far away as possible from China's prosperous southern coastal areas. He says he was simply curious to experience a different lifestyle. Many young people find life here very boring, especially with the lack of nightlife. But I like the quietness here. I grew up in Guangdong and have been so familiar with urban life. Now I want something very different from that. There is not much entertainment in this small city. Some even say life here is dull. But people like An Junxia and Qi Chudong rather enjoy the simplicity. They say the sense of achievement they feel from being a part of China's space dream can easily make up for what's been missing in their life. Wang Xinye, CCTV, Dongfeng Space City. Well, China's space ambitions actually date back to the 1960s. The country's first satellite launch in Jiuquan in China's northwestern Gansu has sent 29 satellites into space over the past uh, decades. Our correspondent Tang Bo has this report. About 20 minutes drive from Dongfeng Space City is China's very first satellite launch center. It is called Base 2, where China started its space program in the 1960s. Once fully occupied with the country's top space scientists, it's now only guarded by six soldiers. The chief designer of the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center, Xu Kejun, used to work there, and he tells me why people had to leave. After decades of operation, launch facilities at Base 2 became less suitable for more launch missions. The old umbilical towers and related facilities couldn't meet the needs of the new launch technologies for China's manned space program. That's why we need to build a new launch center and abandon this old one. Although deprecated, Base 2 still inspired Xu on the design of the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. We adopted the vertical testing and short-term vertical transportation systems that were used at Base 2 in our design of the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. The new launch techniques actually originate from the old site. In total, 29 satellites were launched from the old side, not mentioning missions for launch vehicle testing. And this is the launch pad from where China's very first satellite blasted off in 1970. It's no longer operational and serves as an educational base. And in the more than 40 years since that launch, China's space program has made tremendous progress. Today, China is one of the major players in the space arena. Chinese communication satellites and weather satellites provide China and other customers with their valuable services. In 2003, China became the third country with a successful crewed space program by sending an astronaut into space aboard Shenzhou 5 spacecraft. Five years later, Chinese astronauts on board the Shenzhou 7 spacecraft completed their first spacewalk. 
In 2011, China launched the first module of their space station, the Tiangong-1, and successfully completed the docking with Shenzhou-9 spacecraft. China has also turned its focus to deep space exploration, starting with the moon. It launched the country's first lunar orbiter, Chang'e-1, in late 2007, making China the fifth nation to orbit the moon. Xu tells me that the old launch center carries the hard-working spirit of Chinese space working staff, and that will continue to inspire more people to contribute as China's space program moves forward. Tang Bo, CCTV, Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. And to talk about China's space program, joining us here is John Lewis. He's a professor emeritus of planetary science at the University of Arizona's Lunar and Planetary Laboratory. Well, welcome again, John. It's a pleasure last, to be here. Last year, we witnessed the launch of Shenzhou 9, and this year, Shenzhou 10. The ultimate mission is to build China's own space lab by the year 2020. What do you make uh, of China's space ambition, considering it has been done at such a brisk pace? I think the, uh, the important fact to understand is that China has set out its own path. There has not been uh, an element of competition with another country. There hasn't been any frantic attempt to dash ahead and prove new, uh, new concepts. Rather, uh, China has set a stepwise program and has followed along that path uh, with considerable regularity and uh, conviction. And uh, as a result, China now has a manned space program that must be taken seriously by everyone else in the world. Mm. Well, we know there is already an ISS uh, working there uh, in outer space, and now China has its own plan. Uh, do human beings need uh, so many chances of building a, a habitat out of, out of space? Well, there's, um, there are certain functions that a space station can provide that are of great value. And I think the, the reason that China is doing it now is that they also recognize those points of value. At a space station, one can assemble vehicles and expeditions to go to the moon or to Mars. Uh, one can also use it as a refueling base mm -hmm. for uh, satellites that are outbound from Earth. So uh, those uses, I think, are well understood in China and elsewhere. And the fact that all the spacefaring nations pretty much uh, have reached the same understanding, suggests that it would be easy for them to learn how to cooperate with each other better. Mm. We know uh, that actually Russia and the United States had their prototype space labs, um, the Mir or Skylab, a decade ago, but yes. it's uh, totally different technologies. In terms of technological levels, how would you ex assess China's current uh, technologies when it is uh, making space endeavors? Well, the, uh, the Tiangong uh, module is about eight tons. It's quite small, and it's a practice module. It is an object in space that uh, astronauts can go up and rendezvous with and practice the uh, various techniques involved. And uh, it's simply a, a foreshadowing of much more ambitious uh, modules that will be launched using new generation boosters. Mm. The Long March 5 is due to begin test flights next year, and the Long March 5 will be able to put up 20 to 25 ton modules, which can in turn be fastened together to make much larger space structures. So it's going to be a stepping stone for more ambitious and impressive projects. In the it future. is. It is a training ground for those uh, more advanced uh, objectives, yes. All right. Thank you very much, John, for coming to our show.